Next up for review is a 1988 Mastertronic release. The game is called Werewolves of London. Not sure if they're American or not, but maybe we'll find out when the game loads. Here's the front cover of this one then. Quite a nice logo at the top there. This is the last style of Mastertronic packaging. The black stuff with the white logo up the left hand side. And we've got a werewolf. Or wolfman would be more accurate I think. Uh, rampaging around London. You can see Big Ben in the background there and a London Underground symbol. There's a spine and on the back we've got a lot of screenshots. Let's get close in on those and you can definitely see that there is a subway involved there so or London Underground as it's more commonly known uh, so maybe this is in some way influenced by American Werewolf in London. We'll soon find out. And a blurb about the back there, run around page across the rooftops, get savage in the sewers, have a hairy fit in Hyde Park, spread terror in the tube stations. Sounds interesting. Inside it's pretty basic stuff on this one, gives you the object of the game, relieve yourself of the lycanthropic curse. And uh, this thing you've got to run around killing people as a werewolf, sounds like fun. Quite a lot of detailed uh, information about how to play the game and then on the inside just got the controls and the loading instructions and the plea for programmers and that's it. This is the loading screen and looks like an early attempt to actually digitise uh, the image from the front cover. Uh, you can see the werewolf's face and uh, Big Ben in the side of the screen and a little bit of the London Underground symbol. So. Uh, a lot of grey on there, a lot of grey scales, but uh, not a bad job. And it's just gone. This is the title screen then, as you can see there's a picture of the London Underground there. And a bit of information, conversion by source and originally by Viz Design. And if you listen closely, some of the music does sound like the uh, famous Werewolves of London song and then it kind of goes off and does its own thing. So let's get on and start the game by pressing fire. And uh, the aim of the game, uh, you've got to recover eight crosses by eating yuppies that have said crosses uh, to lift a curse which makes you turn into a werewolf. And I am a werewolf at the moment. Uh, as denoted mainly just by having really long bushy hair around my head. Uh, so you can use a cursor key on the keyboard to switch uh, the grid at the bottom there between various spaces and uh, that allows you to pick things up. There's something to pick up there which looks like a bottle until you pick it up and then I don't know what it's supposed to be. Possibly keys or something like that? Not entirely sure. Anyway, also across the bottom uh, there's an icon here which allows you to jump when you uh, press fire when it's selected. Or maybe not. It's supposed to. Maybe you can only jump in certain places. Uh, and um, there's a blood bag which is your health. And there's also a moon with a cloud over it and that will change the sun eventually and turn you briefly back into a human being. So uh, you wander around London. Um, you can go upstairs and on the roof like that. Uh, if you walk to the top of the roof you materialise on the other side of it and you can go to another doorway in quite a different place uh, which is something else to pick up there which is some kind of thing that opens manhole covers uh, which you can see there but I'm not going to do that just yet um, when you're a werewolf the police try and chase you and if they catch you they put you in prison so you need to avoid them as best you can you don't die when you get put in prison you just have to sit around, oh there we go, I've got caught by a copper and put in prison. So you're stuck in prison basically until you turn into a normal human again, which conveniently just happened. You do lose all the items you picked up, which is very annoying. Um, and then when you come out, um, you're basically back to square one and you've got to wander around and try and do the same stuff you were already trying to do. As you can see the cops don't do any damage to you when you're a normal person. 
so uh, it's flick screen adventure type game as you can see um, you can eat pretty much everyone apart from the police um, to restore your health we'll get to that at some point not a lot going on at the moment you basically just plod around you can try and find items there we go I'm back to being a werewolf now so let's go and eat somebody just to demonstrate that aspect of the game oh they've gone and there was a policeman there as well it's quite clever you can walk behind buildings and pop out between them and all kinds of things like that a lot of coppers about it's the most well policed London streets I've ever seen there's a lot of dead ends as well which is a bit annoying especially when the police are after you and you have to go back the way you came Oh, there's a London Underground station. Oh, blimey, there's police everywhere and some of them are shooting as well. Right, let's try and escape into here. So there's the Underground, which you can't seemingly get through. This is where the jump thing comes into effect, because you can jump over. And also a nice little touch here is there's an escalator, which you go down automatically. It's kind of cool. So I don't know what's going to happen here, I am in the underground. Oh, I've changed back to a human again. That could be useful. Let's see what we can find. Okay, there's something to pick up there. Not sure what that is. This is the biggest problem with the game, in fact. Is that most of the things you pick up, I've got no idea what they are. What's that? Is it a torch? According to the instructions, things you can pick up include keys to the prison, torches, bandages. That might be bandages. Probably is, in fact, because I think that's a... a a lo loose interpretation of a cross on the front of them there um, so no doubt in a moment I'll turn back into oh there's a little door there oh that's where I came in turn back into a werewolf and continue on and go back up there okay I'm a wolf again now and this guy with the blue shirt on here uh, is one of these guys he's carrying a cross I just can't quite get to him at the moment I'm trying to chase him and eat him I'll get him eventually there we go caught him and that's now as you can see at the bottom I've now got one of the crosses and if you stand close to him you can actually eat him but you can't really see because he's right behind a blue fence so let's try and eat this woman here instead so there you go she's died and if you look closely every time I press fire near to her you eat more and more of her you can actually leave it like a pile of red bloody mess there just trying to avoid the police again there. These guys have actually got guns as well. So uh, that's how you uh, progress in the game. There's another one with a cross here. If I can get to the right place without getting caught by the cops. It's going to be difficult. There we go, got him as well. Oh no, they dropped a tube ticket there I think as well. Uh, but I'm put in prison again. This is the most annoying part of the game. Um, if you get put in prison just after you get turned into a wolf, you have to sit here doing nothing for like a minute or two until uh, you're turned back into a human. Luckily it seems to have uh, timed that reasonably well again. But once again I'm back to square one with no objects. Those bandages and the other things that I've picked up are gone. Uh, so I've got to go and do that stuff again. So a little bit annoying. Um, not much more to say about the game. It's kind of fun. Um, you can fall off the roof and uh, you see a nice little animation there as your health goes down uh, the blood runs out of the blood bag which is kind of cool as well uh, so lo lots of uh, nice touches in the game the graphics are a bit uh, boring the worst thing is probably that you blend into the background quite easily and also um, things aren't very easy to make out what they are as I've already mentioned but let's go in here because this is a different place and I'm Wolfman again now as you can probably tell there's not much difference between the wolf man and the human man and of course the police will be after me okay so I'm not even sure if I'm in the same underground station but there does seem to be some bandages to pick up again which if they are bandages aren't doing a lot of good oh well, they've gone but well, my health didn't seem to change I'm gonna get caught here aren't I oh I just got out of the way of him uh, so the, the graphics, as I was saying, oh, that was a lucky escape, uh, a bit bit chunky and kind of um, busy, I think would be the best word for them. Uh, but, you know, it's not too bad. Also not very good, to be honest, is the music, which handily, 
you can switch off. It's very repetitive. Uh, sound effects are then limited to the pitter patter of the uh, character's feet. Um, the characters are a little bit on the bland side. Basically, every oh prison again. Boring. So once again, I'm out of prison. Let's go through the same laborious process. That is by far the most annoying part about the game. As I was saying, the music can be switched off, as you can probably tell. Uh, that's a bonus. Um, not much more to say about the game. Oh, I was going to say about the characters. Uh, you probably noticed they're all basically exactly the same, apart from the core of their jumpers. Obviously, the policemen look a bit different. Um, this is kind of an early example of a, an open world game though, you can wander wherever you like um, it's even, if you like, got some similarities to Grand Theft Auto because the police are trying to get you and if they do get you they put you in prison um, so I don't suppose it was any kind of influence on Grand Theft Auto but that is a, a similar factor I do tend to rather just wander around the same places over and over again due to getting caught and put in jail rather frequently but uh, there is some variation in the landscapes as well if you wander far enough. Uh, so there you go, that's that's pretty much all I've got to say about it. Um, it's not a bad game and what is good about it also is that it's not that difficult to lose health, if that's the right way to say it. Um, your health stays quite far up most of the time in the game, uh, which is kind of cool because it means you can, you can actually wander around the game quite a lot. Uh, just munch that lady there. Get up. And I've been put in jail again. Um, that is the most annoying part, as I've already said. But I think um, with a bit of perseverance and clever manoeuvring, you could actually uh, have quite a bit of fun with the game. Uh, the idea is that you find the keys to the prison and put them in the prison uh, so that you can, while you're a human, so that you can get out more easily when you turn into the wolf and get caught, which is inevitable. Uh, also there's things like the manhole covers, I haven't really managed to show that, but you can lift them up and wander around the sewers, which allows you to escape from the coppers as well. Uh, oh, there's another one of those guys. Another cross to be had there, once you turn back into a wolf. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of quite a fun game. I think it's worth 199 without any doubt. It's got a few flaws. The music is not great, as I've mentioned. Um, the fact that you get chucked in jail every five minutes is also a tad annoying. Uh, the graphics are a bit hit and miss, but overall, it's quite a nice idea, quite original. One of the, definitely one of the more original games uh, that Mastertronic put out, um, and uh, yeah, not too bad at all really. Um, so there's not much else to say. I don't think you're going to see much more from me because sooner or later I'm just going to get chucked in jail again. Um, so we'll just leave it there. <laughs>